This is me cutting open a brand new $1,100 guitar. And you might ask yourself, why? Well, we cut open this guitar so you can cut through the bullshit and decide for yourself whether or not this guitar is any good or not. All right, folks, today's the big day where we finally cover a Yamaha guitar for you. Uh, Matt and I spent some time on the internet trying to figure out what our next breakdown was gonna be. Uh, so many comments were saying, do a Yamaha, do a Yamaha, and I figured if we're gonna do one, let's do one that I think is gonna compete with some of the big boys. And so we landed on this guitar, which is the Yamaha LL16D, which is a modified dreadnought guitar that in my opinion, I feel like falls right in line with what like a mid-range Taylor or even a D28, some people are gonna come at me for that one, I think, a Martin D28, uh, kinda has all of the features and competes really nicely with those guitars, but for a lot less money. So it's gonna be up to you guys to decide whether or not you think this guitar for $1,130 as of the making of this video is as good or maybe even better than some of those other guitars. First, let's go over some of the features that come with this guitar. Um, as you can see, a really both comfortable and familiar yet different shape that this guitar has. This is what Yamaha calls their modified dreadnought. Uh, and I personally love it because I'm not a big dreadnought fan. I think they feel a little bit too square and boxy. And I think Yamaha kind of just tweaked the shape in all the right places and it's just very curvy and looks really nice. Um, does have a 16 inch lower bout and it is five inches deep. So just as deep as you would on a D28, D18, things like that, um, or a Taylor Grand Auditorium, just as big of a guitar. Um, this particular model of guitar, in fact, I think pretty much all of the Yamahas in the LL line of guitars have Engelman spruce tops, which is an interesting choice. It's not something you see in a lot of highly manufactured guitars. You do see it in handmade acoustics. But on top of it being Engelman Spruce, Yamaha actually promotes this, very highly promoted, as their acoustic resonance enhancement technology would. Um, which, um, as I've talked about on this channel, torification is a thing that people do in the guitar building industry where they heat treat wood inside kilns to basically simulate um, old wood. And that's what this is. That's what the ARE technology that Yamaha uses basically is from my understanding. Um, it's, they, you know, it's a trademark name that they use. I have built many guitars with torrified spruce tops. Um, and it does make a difference. Um, it's not one of those snake oil things that are out there in the ether, but I'm being very careful to say it does make a difference. Does it make it better? Does it make it worse? I think it just makes it different. That's my opinion on what torrifying sounds like. Um, it does make the wood more stable, which is a really good thing. I tend to find that torrified woods are a little bit more, um, a little bit more open sounding. They tend to be a little bit more, um, chimey. Uh, and a little bit more bright than non torrified woods. But you guys will hear that when we play this guitar. Um, the other thing that this guitar has is all solid Indian rosewood back and sides. Really nice quarter sawn piece of wood. Um, really, really well executed. Uh, nice dark piece of wood. Looks really nice. It is bound, the entire body is bound in real maple, which is a nice touch. A lot of the times for this, this you know, eleven to $1,300 price range guitar, you're not going to get wooden bindings. So that is very nice. The other thing that separates this guitar from a lot of guitars in this price range is the whole thing is bound as well in real abalone shell. Um, not some sticker or anything like that, but real shell. Looks really nice. Um, and it also has a double abalone rosette. And it just makes this guitar look a lot more premium than it actually is. Uh, moving up the guitar, my only real gripe aesthetically with this guitar is that the fretboard and the headstock are bound, but they're bound in kind of an off-white plastic. And a little disappointed there because it would have been nice to see the binding match here as well as it does on the body. Um, speaking of the neck, it is a one and three quarter inch wide nut, so it's very comfortable in the hand. And it's actually a five piece neck with a scarfed head joint and a stacked heel. The nice thing about it being um, a laminated neck as it is, is it does add actually quite a bit of stiffness to the neck and allows the company to make a guitar neck that is almost always guaranteed to be quarter sawn. So that's a really nice thing. And the, the wood itself is actually mahogany and they use Indian rosewood for the laminates on here. It looks really nice. In addition to the truss rod that's inside this guitar, it is gonna make this neck a lot more stable than a non-laminated neck. So I think that that's a nice touch. Oh yes, the fretboard 
and the bridge on this guitar are not Indian rosewood, they're actually ebony, which once again is a premium option that you tend to not see uh, on guitars in this price range anymore. Used to back in the day. Uh, we have a nice tortoise pick guard that is not too big, not too ugly, like a lot of guitars are these days, I think. And the fretboard inlays, another nice premium option. Um, these really nice snowflake inlays uh, that are both like classic and tasty, but not gaudy, not enough that you're like, okay, we get it. Another feature that this guitar has, just looking at it, you wouldn't think that it has a pickup inside of it, but it actually does. If you look down here, it does have an end pin jack and they call this their zero impact pickup. And I guess the whole point behind that is that what they're saying is that the impact, the, um, the pickup doesn't actually affect the acoustic tone of the guitar. Plus it doesn't aesthetically uh, look like the guitar has a pickup, which is actually nice for a lot of people. I know a lot of folks don't like to have all of the preamp and everything here. And you don't even have any sound hole controls with this guitar. You're just gonna plug it in and be ready to go off to the races. Um, I do want to note that I actually did do a string change on this guitar before we started this review and was actually able to kind of dig a little deeper into what makes this pickup tick. Uh, what's interesting about it is it is just an undersaddle piezo pickup. Uh, I couldn't see anything particularly special about it other than the fact that um, instead of it just being one pickup that fits underneath the strings is that it actually has a separate piezo for each individual string. Um, so, you know, we plug this in, it's probably going to sound like any other piezo pickup. It is just supposed to be a pickup there if you want it, but nothing too crazy. The only other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys that Yamaha does advertise is that this guitar does have unscalloped bracing, which, um, you know, is... A lot of people get caught up in scallop versus unscallop bracing. Uh, I don't want to wade too deep into that pool. We're going to judge this guitar by how it sounds. As a guitar builder, I will say that every acoustic guitar needs to be voiced to make it sound as good as possible. And every guitar has its own individual type of bracing profile that it needs to be at its maximum capacity. A factory made guitar such as this Yamaha, they don't have time to hand voice every single instrument. So either choosing to go scalloped or unscalloped is a choice that you have to make. Um, but bold statements like I see with Yamaha here is that it's uh, you know unscalloped bracing to give it more low end. Uh, I, I don't wanna get too caught up into that. Um, every guitar is gonna be very slightly different because every piece of wood is slightly different, but it does have unscalloped bracing. And if you're into that sort of thing, this one has that. Now, let's talk about some of the hardware that comes with this guitar. And by that, we do mean tuning machines and nuts and saddles and bridge pins, and all of that. Um, really nice gold tuning machines that are on here. They look very much like Goto's, but um, they do not have any branding or anything on them. They have a very nice feel to them. If I were to guess, they feel very much like just Goto 18 to one tuning machines. Really nice, um, nice gold plating on them and they feel really good. Now. The nut and saddle on this guitar, um, I did see several folks online and doing reviews where they were saying this has the Tusk, T-U-S-Q brand um, nut and saddle on it, but I can confirm that they are just basic white plastic. And the other thing is the bridge pins that are on this guitar are just kind of some cheap plastic ones with little white dots in the middle. So definitely room for improvement there. I think that the good news here is possibly that Yamaha is keeping the price down. And with what you saved on the guitar, hopefully maybe you take it to your local luthier and if you'd like to upgrade to bone nut and saddle and better bridge pins, that is something that you can do. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about is playability. Uh, super important, I think only second to how does the guitar sound. So um, just some of the specs as far as the playability is concerned. I almost always forget this, but Yamaha does pretty much all of their guitars in what is the classical standard of 650 millimeters. Um, so for those of us here in the US, that actually translates out to, what did I say, 25.59 inches. So basically 20, 25.6 inches, which is actually a pretty long scale length for those of you that are um, kind of keep up on what scale lengths um, are for certain brands. So like, for example, a Martin is like 25.34. Um, the longer scale length on a Gibson is 25.3. Um, if we're moving over to the electrics, um, fenders are 25.5, um, and Gibsons are even shorter than that. Uh, so it's just a, it's an interesting scale length. If you're coming from the world where you've played classical guitars your whole life, this is going to feel perfect to you. Um, if you are coming from especially Gibsons or anything like that, this guitar might feel a little longer. Um, longer scale lengths, though, do tend to help the bottom end of the guitar. Basically what it does is it makes so that the guitar has to have um, more tension on it to get a string to the same note as it would if it was a shorter scale length. Um, we're talking about subtle differences here. 
but um, it does make a difference in how a guitar feels. And if you have large hands, a larger scale length can be a little bit easier. And with the one and three quarter inch nut, this, this, this whole guitar does feel very comfortable. I'm not sure what Yamaha advertises their neck profile as, but it just feels right. I don't, I don't have any complaints about it. I think if I was to give this kind of a, a general feel, if I were to close my eyes, I would kind of say it has kind of a Taylor-esque feel to it as far as just the profile of the neck. Um, as far as the action on this guitar, when I pulled it out of the box, we did buy this from Sweetwater probably about three months ago, and Sweetwater does have their own in-house kind of QA before it goes out the door, but it's dialed in. It's really dialed in. I just checked the string action, and down here to 12th fret, we are, from the low E to the high E, we're between 60 thousandths up to about 80 thousandths of an inch, which is pretty much dead on of where I would want. Truss rod, I did do a very slight truss rod adjustment on it. It was out of the box when we did receive it. It had about 10 thousandths of an inch of relief in the neck, which for a lot of folks, that's right where they want it. Um, I like my necks a little bit straighter, so I got it down to about 5 thousandths. Um, but yeah, the guitar just feels really comfortable to play. And uh, it's definitely one of the one of the more um, better playing guitars that we've had out of all of the ones that we've had um, so far in this breakdown series. Okay, now on to the most important part of any guitar review, which is how does this thing sound? But before we get into it, I wanna run you guys through the signal chain and how we're capturing the audio so that you at home can trust it and know that uh, what you're hearing is trustworthy. So as always, we are using a Zoom H6 recorder about a foot away from the sound hole using the XY microphone. Um, and when you are hearing the guitar, we are gonna be muting the overhead microphone so that you guys are only hearing this. Um, what else? Um, we're not using any sort of compression, no sort of EQ, no post-processing whatsoever. So what you hear is what's coming out of this guitar. And for most accuracy on your end at home, make sure you're either using headphones, a good quality set of headphones, or good quality speakers because your cell phone is not a good judge of character. Okay, um, just some notes on also is that this guitar has been freshly strung up with the Dario Light Gauge 8020 Phosphor Bronze strings. So for those of you at home or wondering what kind of strings are on this guitar, that's what we do have. Um, in these breakdowns, we always just kind of run through the cowboy chord starting with an E major, and then we work our way back around to E major again so that you guys can hear what those sound like in their kind of pure form. So we'll do that now. So I think that this guitar has a very kind of a very stereotypical Engelman spruce sound to it. So uh, I think some people have kind of, uh, they, they put Yamaha in a box like we put in a lot of brands. You know, uh, Martin has a sound, Gibson has a sound, Taylor has a sound, Yamaha has a sound. Um, I think a lot of it, especially with their more modern ones, they do use Engelman spruce a lot. And that is, uh, I think, a, the big fingerprint of what we're hearing is that just the spruce alone. But um, what I'll do before I kind of tell you what my thoughts are on it is we'll just kind of play a couple of the same riffs that I do in all of these. So if you guys would like to, you can go back and, and, and go to the other breakdown videos and I play the exact same songs on those ones so that you guys can see what do you think of this guitar versus those ones.
Yeah, I think um, sound is a subjective thing that so many people kind of will be like, it's the best or it's the worst. Um, all I can do is kind of give you my opinion based off of all the guitars that I've played, um, not just factory made guitars, but handmade boutique guitars as well. And I like the sound of this guitar. I think it sounds really great, but I do think that it has a very specific sound. Um, and that can be a good thing. I think if you are a guitar owner who owns many guitars, I think that this is an acoustic guitar that kind of has its own little sliver of sonic footprint, uh, fingerprint. And I think that if I were to try to articulate what that sonic fingerprint is, to me, it's kind of a scooped mids. Um, I think that that is pretty fair on the sound of this guitar. It doesn't have this like crazy bottom end, but it does have a very woody bottom end, which to me is always something I'm looking for. I want it to sound like a wooden instrument. Um. A little bit of buzzing. I think I have the truss rod a little bit too straight, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it also has a, has a really nice shimmer to it. It has a very nice high end kind of just chiminess to it coming off the high end of the guitar um, but it does have a scooped mid um, it's interesting I did recently this morning actually watch a video of this compared to a, a Martin D28 which is similar you know it's a spruce top Indian rosewood back and sides dreadnought guitar and the thing about the Martin is it did have more mids to it than this guitar did but I like the sound of this one I think it cuts through really nicely and I have found myself over the course of the last several months picking this one up to just play it and I do enjoy it um, so yeah, I think it's a great sounding guitar, but do know that if you're looking for something that has that iconic dreadnought sound, I don't think this one has it. I think this one has a different, I think this one sounds, I think a little bit closer to a Taylor than uh, a Martin. If I were to, I think that's a good way of describing it to, to you folks at home. I think it sounds great. Uh, and once again, for less than $1,200, I think that definitely hits the mark. Um, there's many guitars that are more expensive than this that sound worse than this. So, um, But that's just what I think based off all the guitars that I've played. Everybody's going to be kind of looking for their own type of sound. But uh, it all just depends on what you're looking for. All right, the last thing that we need to cover in this category is the case that the guitar comes with. And this Yamaha does come with a really nice hard shell case. Um, I, there is some labeling on it. And it seems like the brand, the company that makes the case is Access. Uh, just a standard black Hard shell case does not have any markings on the outside, which in my opinion is a good thing. I don't always like to advertise um, what type of guitar is on the inside of the case. It's just a general security thought that I often have. Um, <laughs> I have a joke that I normally tell, but we'll skip that one. <laughs> but yeah, black interior has a nice little pocket on the inside. Uh, Yamaha did throw in all of the information for kind of um, care and feeding, including the pickup and a truss rod wrench as well as it does look like uh, just a, a quality check little certificate. So nothing too much to talk about there. It is just a standard hard shell case. Um, it has a lock and everything. You'd be able to travel well with this thing. It's funny, the further we get into this and the more reviews we do, the more I actually kind of prefer a soft shell, a really well made soft shell case because it's easier to travel with. But uh, in this case, uh, uh, I think that it's great. And for, for $1,200, it should come with a hard shell case. Moving on to the lifestyle category, we're gonna start off with our liquid resistance test. This is a torture test that we do to see how the finish of the instrument is gonna hold up over its lifetime. First, let's start off by applying our bug spray and now our suntan lotion. And then we'll apply a little bit of fresh water and then some salt water and then a little bit of scotch followed by some beer. And this is how it looked after 24 hours of sitting on the guitar. And now we're gonna wipe it off. And as you can see, this polyurethane finish held up absolutely perfectly and as we would expect with any polyurethane finish. Now we're going to move on to our scratch resistance test, and we do this by taking a ball of keys and belt buckles and rubbing them back and forth across the back of the guitar for 60 seconds, and then we're going to see how well that finish holds up to that. 
This polyurethane finish held up super well, just like we expected, with only just some fine, faint scratch marks left behind, but nothing that can't be buffed out. Now we're going to perform our dent resistance test, and we do this by dropping a 1 inch tungsten carbide steel ball down onto the guitar from a height of 24 inches, and we're going to see how well not only the finish, but how well the wood holds up as well. We do this test two times to make sure that we get good results. And as you can see, the Indian rosewood back on this guitar held up really well. We do have two small dents where that carbide ball landed, and they came in at about a half a millimeter deep. The next thing we're going to do is our string tension resistance test, and this is done so that we can see how much the entire instrument moves under different string tensions. First we strung up the guitar with a brand new set of Daddario Phosphor Bronze light gauge strings, and these come in at a total of 160.54 pounds of tension. And then we're going to take our belly gauge and zero it out so that we have a good baseline to start with. And then we're going to take our neck relief gauge and zero it out as well. And then we're going to remove those light gauge strings and put on a set of heavies. And these come in at 212.82 pounds of string tension. So that's 52.28 pounds more string tension on this guitar. With that higher string tension on the top, we do have that belly of the guitar rising up by 13 thousandths of an inch, which isn't so much that if you were to switch from light to heavy gauge strings that you would need a new setup. We did check the neck as well once we put the new strings on, and it did not move at all. We just forgot to get some footage, so it stayed perfectly straight. The next thing that we need to do is our drop test, and we do this to simulate what happens if a guitar accidentally falls off of its stand onto the hard ground. First, we're going to test out what happens if it falls backwards. Now let's see what happens if it falls forward. And the Yamaha held up really well. And as you can see here on the headstock, all we have are these two small little spots where the finish wanted to chip, but didn't. And on the back of the guitar, we just have these little spots where there was probably some pebbles or sand on my floor that dinged the finish, but nothing that's unexpected. All right, the very last thing that we need to do is to put this guitar under the knife and see what it's made of on the inside. We actually take a saw and cut this guitar all the way around its perimeter so that we can crack it open and show everybody everything that's going on on the inside. Now that we have the guitar cut in half and sitting on the workbench, I can really get a good view of what the inside looks like. And the first thing that stands out to me are those unscalloped braces that we mentioned in the featured section of this video. Um, for those of you that have never seen unscalloped braces, this is exactly what they typically look like. Um, a lot beefier than you would see with fully scalloped braces. And to me, that's why unscalloped braced guitars tend to have a little bit more high and mid-range frequencies in them, because I believe that all that extra mass that you have in the braces makes the top a little bit tighter and makes it so that it doesn't have quite as much bottom end. But it does make a guitar, in my opinion, a little bit louder um, and does make it more durable for um, those day-to-day -day, um, ebbs and flows in humidity. If you look here, we can see the main intersection of the X brace, and this is the most important joint on the entire guitar top. Uh, and typically on factory made guitars, they're a lot sloppier looking than this, and this is really well done. I know that there is a slight little gap there on the right hand side, but it is well within the range of what I would call acceptable for a factory made guitar. Something that really surprised me on this guitar that I wasn't expecting was the fact that it has an Indian Rosewood bridge plate, which I've personally not seen been used very much in factory made guitars. Typically we see this being made out of maple, uh, but Indian Rosewood is a better tone wood than maple and it's something that will just add a touch more better frequency response on a guitar and I just think that it's a nice touch that Yamaha does that. As we move down the sides of the guitar you can see that the sides are actually reinforced about every three to five inches with solid strips of mahogany. And this is something you don't typically see in factory made guitars and bodes really well for the longevity and the durability of the guitar. One thing that I did notice that also surprised me was the fact that three of the four fan braces on the inside of the guitar top were actually glued on in the wrong grain orientation. This is to say that typically you would want your braces 
glued on in the quarter sawn direction and these ones are actually glued down in the flat sawn direction. It's not that it's going to make the guitar sound much worse, it's just one of those small attention to detail things that kind of surprised me after seeing so many well done things on this guitar. If we look at our neck joint, we can see here that it is a dovetail as advertised and from what we can see where we cut the guitar in half, it fits really, really snugly and looks super well executed. There is that small gap underneath the dovetail joint that you want so that if in the case of a neck reset, in the future you have a place to inject heat and steam into that so that you can break it back open again. The neck block itself on this guitar is really well executed. Um, and I do like to see the fact that they have the reinforcement that extends over where the fingerboard goes on the top of the guitar, as well as the traditional popsicle stick brace at the top. Those are going to make it so that you don't get that 14 fret hump on the fretboard, as well as preventing any cracking on the edges of the fingerboard. I do see a little bit of glue squeeze out in a few places on the top of this guitar. Most of it looks pretty stinking good, but the few places that it is squeezing out, um, I do hate to see it and wish they'd done a better job of cleaning that up. As we move on to the back of the guitar, um, things do start to look the way that we typically are used to seeing them in these breakdown videos. Because you can see the back of the guitar through the sound hole, there tends to be almost no glue squeeze out whatsoever, and that is what we see here. One thing that caught my eye and also surprised me was the back strap. And that's the piece of wood that runs down the very middle of the back to help hold those two back plates together. The purpose of that strap is to prevent cracking and what you want is to have the grain orientation running perpendicular to the grain on the back itself. Uh, and as you can see here, all of the grains in the woods are running in the same direction and this isn't going to do a very good job of preventing any cracking. So that's something that uh, kind of surprised me. On the positive side, you'll notice that all of the back braces as well as the X braces are tucked nicely into the kerfing on the sides of the guitar. Uh, and that's not something that a lot of manufacturers do, but any premium guitar should have that done. And Yamaha does a really good job of doing it and it's super cleanly executed. Well, that does it for us. That's the Yamaha LL16D. So what did you guys think? I'm excited to say that this guitar actually exceeded my expectations. I've always told folks that Yamahas are some of the best bangs for the buck out there. And this guitar obviously looked really good. And I thought that it sounded really good. But when we cut it open and gave it its torture test, it met all of my expectations and looked wonderfully constructed on the inside. So I can walk away from this review still highly recommending this guitar as well as Yamaha as a brand. I don't think that there's many guitars out there in the price range that Yamaha sells their guitars that have as much care put into them as these ones do. If there are other makes or models of guitars that you would like to see us do these in-depth reviews on, please comment down below and let us know. Make sure that you do like and subscribe and support our channel so that we can do more unbiased reviews just like this in the future.